Hello, I'm Brendan Donnelly, the Director of the Federal Trust. Last week, I did a video on the Conservative Leadership Contest and Brexit. I thought I'd said all that there was to be said last week, but Rishi Sunak has come up this week with a tweet and uh, a video uh, which are so extraordinary and so illuminating on the subject of Conservative attitudes to Brexit uh, that I thought it was worth commenting on them. In his tweet, um, Sunak promises a new Brexit delivery unit. Well, it's new in the sense that uh, Brenda of Bristol might say, you must be joking, not another one. And the attempts have been uh, many and um, fairly meagerly successful over the past six years to bring about the benefits of Brexit, to get Brexit done, to take advantage of Brexit. The, the Department for Exiting the European Union had exploiting the opportunities of Brexit as one of the main tasks there have been numerous uh, internal inquiries within the civil service and government since 2016. We have um, Jacob Rees-Mogg uh, as the Minister for Brexit Opportunities. Um, two governmental committees are sitting uh, on what's called retained EU legislation. Uh, there's a parliamentary inquiry and Jacob Rees-Mogg even asked the legal experts of the Sun to advise him. Uh, on unnecessary and constraining European legislation, which could be uh, uh, abolished. Um, so there's nothing new about this proposal. Uh, in fact, uh, the proposal itself is an implicit recognition uh, that the benefits, the Brexit, the supposed benefits, um, have been meagre indeed, uh, and they need to be made more manifest if Brexit is to, to succeed. Uh, this change, this step change supposedly, is going to be brought about by a delivery unit. Whenever a politician talks about delivery, it usually means he hasn't got any very clear idea what he wants to achieve. And that will be particularly so in this case, because you can't deliver Brexit, because Brexit meant so many different things to different people. Indeed, that was part of the, the cunning plan of Dominic Cummings, not to have an alternative to being in the European Union, but to allow everybody to fantasize about their own preferred alternative. For some, it was indeed Singapore on Thames. Uh, for others, it was quite different. It was more money being spent on state provision, but perhaps particularly in the Red Wall. That was why the NHS um, fantasy on the bus, uh, an extra 350 million pounds every week, was so attractive to certain people because the idea was that there would be um, more resources available for domestic um, governmental services. Um, Sunak's answer to this problem is to review every piece of what he calls EU legislation on the British statute book. He says in the, in the uh, video uh, that he'll, he will review or repeal every piece of European legislation. Uh, it's interesting that uh, in the tweet, he only says review. Obviously, he concluded that in, the, in the, the, the video, it was necessary to give a bit more red meat or perhaps blue meat um, to his conservative supporters to review or repeal. Now, of course, that could lead to absolutely nothing. You can review anything and repeal nothing. Uh, you can repeal one piece of legislation and then call it a, 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 an over, overriding review. But the whole problem of reviewing or repealing European legislation uh, is, is a difficult one, much more difficult than Mr. Sunak allows. Most European legislation, indeed almost all European legislation, is embedded within British legislation and is a, a, a crucial, a central part of the whole British legal structure. If you abolished all European legislation or legislation that has a European background from the British statute book, there would be great holes in the British um, legal system, uh, particularly as far as environmental matters are concerned, basic rights of, of equality, workers' rights, environmental questions. All these issues would be left without recourse. You would need to rewrite the whole statute book. Indeed, the whole idea of looking, um, reviewing and repealing European legislation just because it's European legislation is to put the cart before the horse. If there's European legislation that doesn't work for the United Kingdom, 
and it's possible to repeal it or change it outside the EU, then a rational case can be made for doing so. But that will be the exception, not the rule. Contrary to Brexiter mythology, there is no body of um, oppressive European legislation uh, which is going to um, constrain uh, the natural entrepreneurial spirits of, of the British population. European legislation over the past 40, 50 years has been very much shaped by the United Kingdom. If there is European-derived re re regulation on the British stat book, group book um, then on the whole, it's because it's advantageous to the British um, national interests um, that that should be so. It, it would be a, a, an act of, of wanton legal vandalism simply to repeal legislation because it has a European aspect to it. The only rational grounds for doing that would be in order to bring about a divergence, which would make it more difficult in future for the United Kingdom to rejoin the European Union. There are certainly some within the Conservative Party who'd like to do that. And it's one of the reasons why those people who think it will be easier to get back into the European Union in the distant future are, are wrong. The longer we're outside the European Union, the more difficult it will be re to rejoin because of the divergence, which to a large extent uh, will have been favored by the Conservative Party. This um, delivery unit, Brexit delivery unit, um, the very phrase itself is a, an implicit admission that Brexit hasn't yet been delivered, uh, will start its work in, in the first 100 days, although we have no finishing date for the activity. Uh, this promises to be uh, another meaningless performative um, promise, uh, which will lead to very little. Uh, the 100 days to begin the, op the operation are a bit like the man who has a New Year resolution to give up prevarication starting in April. I, I'm confident it, it will, will lead nowhere. And if it does lead anywhere, um, then it will be malign in its consequences. Perhaps the most important uh, element of the treat, however, is the final injunction of Richie Sunak, let's keep Brexit safe. This is an extraordinary thing to say uh, when six years after the referendum, uh, there is no organized political opposition to, being, to, um, to Brexit, uh, where six years of conservative government ought to have sufficed uh, to bring about um, an embedding of, of Brexit. Um, on the contrary, Brexit remains an entirely controversial project with substantial majorities frequently saying that Brexit is either being mishandled or was a bad idea in the first place. Many Brexiters like Sunak know perfectly well how lucky they were to win in 2016. And they have the fear that if there's any um, proper scrutiny, which very rarely takes place of Brexit, um, uh, then the whole project runs the risk of collapsing in on itself, as they used to say, under the weight of its own uh, contradictions. Um, Sunak and those who think like him believe that Brexit is not safe and it needs to be made safer. It's extraordinary, in my view, that their political opponents um, don't understand and aren't willing to take advantage of this unease. The assumption that Brexit will last for 40 years or 50 years it is one that is not made by its proponents. And that's a, a curious inversion uh, of the way in which politics usually works. Perhaps I could conclude with, with a word about, about the video. Uh, the video shows uh, Rishi Sunak um, putting through a shredder uh, pieces of paper entitled EU legislation. Now, of course, that's a, a misrepresentation, a stereotype of the way that um, British legislation works. Uh, EU legislation is not something separate from British legislation. And Sunak has been, been rightly criticised for the naivety and the stereotypical nature of his, um, of his video. Uh, there is, however, um, one thing that I would like to commend him for. It's that the background to the video is the Ode to Joy. I think it was originally intended as a, as a taunt um, to, the, um, to the European Union, um, but I thought it lent a, a certain tone and class to the video, which I found very welcome. Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Sunak for lending uh, a, a little bit of, um, uh, of uplift.
um, to a competition between himself and Liz Trust, which seems essentially to have consisted uh, of his accusing Liz Trust of being Donald Trump and her accusing him even more insultingly of Gordon Brown. Thank you, Rishi Sunak, for bringing a bit of tone to the debate. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. It's one of a series of videos about Europe, about Brexit, and about the future of the European Union uh, from the Federal Trust. Uh, I would hope that you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then you'll have notifications of future videos, which I hope you'll enjoy uh, as much as perhaps you enjoyed this one.